All right. Yo, 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 yo. What is up, peeps? How is everybody doing tonight? We are live. And we got Pokenav. Yeah, guys. Hey, Pokenav, you want to say hi? What is going on, guys? Thanks for having me here. Glad to be here with you guys and uh, looking to open up some packs and answer some questions. And this is the first time I've ever been on a podcast like this before. I, I have to say, I think the last time that I played like a two truths and a lie type of thing, I was probably like <laughs> 10 or so. <laughs> so this this should be a lot of fun. So thank you guys for having me here. No, dude, thank you so much for coming in, bro. Honestly, like it, it means a lot that, that I know you're a busy dude. Uh, so it, it means a lot that you're coming out here and, and doing this with us, man. And with all the tech issues too, man. Yeah, honestly, like if you guys don't know what just <laughs> happened, like literally for the past 20 minutes, but yeah, dude, you, you've been patient enough with us, man. We really do uh, appreciate it. Hi, fishing. Hi, good. Tanu. How are you guys doing tonight? Uh, by the way, guys, if you guys have not yet subscribed to Pokena, um, you guys have to go do it. Okay. Let's help him hit 10 K. He's super close. He is super close to 10 K. He's less than 50 subs away. So if we can put in a tiny bit of help. And try to help him get there. Please make sure to go do it. Follow him at Pokenaf on all social media. All social media, or do you have any like Pokenaf official or anything like that on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. So you can find me at Real Pokenav on Instagram. Obviously, Pokenav on YouTube. Um, and if you're interested in checking out products, uh, you can also head on over to my website, which is PokenavNation.com, and uh, check out some of the products that we have available there yeah guys so oh, wow. make sure to go do that i know he has the the tree link or the link tree or whatever in his instagram so you can definitely branch out and follow him everywhere and check him out everywhere from there but yeah dude honestly we're, we're super happy to have you here man like you, you're you're one of the big dogs now so it's, it's kind of crazy it's <laughs> kind of surreal I don't. I don't know about that. I don't know. I. I, I think uh, big is in terms of uh, my buddy Colonel <laughs> Pikachu back here. I'm just trying to live up to him. So every day I just. I just look at Colonel Pikachu and I think that's. That's my end goal, is to be like Colonel yeah, Pikachu. I, I think. I think that's my end goal too, dude. Honestly, I, I might need to get myself <laughs> a, a Colonel Pikachu as well. Oh, um, so funny. So what uh, packs do you have to open today, yeah, Pokemon? What, what, what do you have going on today for yeah. us? Yeah. So I had a bunch of, and you guys are in Canada, right? No, we're in Orlando. I'm, Orlando, actually. Oh, you're in Orlando. Maybe, yeah. maybe. so Jules, my buddy Jules, I thought, because with your accent, I thought you were up there in Canada. Yeah. But my buddy Jules, as you guys know, you guys had him on last time. They do not have these up in Canada, apparently. So I thought this would be fun. And I had a bunch of them sitting around. It's a bunch of Dollar Tree Sword and Shield base set packs. So a lot of the time when uh, people order products from me, um, I'll throw in a couple uh, of these dollar three packs as well. So I have a bunch of these laying around. So Dang, dude, we should have we should have gotten go them ahead, from let's you. Let's go ahead and get through those. <laughs> we should have gotten yeah. them from you. We literally <laughs> went like trying to match you on the on the dollar tree packs. We went from like six seven dollar generals, dollar trees, like all around our area. Nothing, Nothing. dude. Nothing. Everything we is out. Went to one of them and then it was like. Oh, yeah, some dude showed up this morning when they got here, and he bought all four boxes mm -hmm. full of packs. And I was like, oh, wow. okay, thank you. So we're <laughs> doing some Battle Styles packs that we had from a booster box. Nice. So we got a, a few of those here uh, trying to complete the set before Chilling Rain comes out. Question, do you know if any of your locals are doing the pre-release this weekend for Chilling Rain? Not that I'm aware of, not that I'm aware of uh, the guy that I work very closely with, who is the card shop owner, but is also a distributor and the distributor that I work with, um, who he's actually going to be my business partner here soon. So we're, we've got a, a business in the works right now, um, but he's not even doing uh, pre-releases right now wow. for Chilling Rain. And I, I don't know of any other places that are at this point, at least here, I, I'm in the... Uh, I don't know. I think that I think that there's well, one. I don't think a lot of people have received a lot of their pre-release products for Chilling Rain. Uh, two, I think people are still a little bit apprehensive, maybe, uh, to go out. Um, I know you guys over in Florida and us over here in Arizona. We're we're definitely a lot more opened up yeah, than 100%. most places. Yeah. Um, so I don't think there's nearly as much trepidation here and where you guys are at. Um, but I think there's still there's still some of that. But uh, yeah. yeah, that that's that's only my that's that's my assumption on it. Yeah, no, for, for us we we call today, and normally we have two or three locals that are very good um, about it. Like they usually mm -hmm. have it, they give you the extra packs and everything. Like if it was like an actual tournament day, but 
to my, this weekend they're just not doing it they're like we didn't get our locations um we simply can't do it mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude, like, mm-hmm. you guys made it through the entire pandemic and everything was fine. Like, like you guys didn't have any lack of product whatsoever. And now we're getting to the point where things are returning to normality and you guys are not even getting allocations for these. Like, that's kind of yeah. nuts, like, just how, how the market is right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, I talked about it in a recent video of mine kind of uh, apprising everyone of, of things to at least be cognizant of as we get, get to release day with Chilling Rain and... I mean, everybody's everybody out there is a little different, right? There's certain card shop owners that are going to get more allocations or certain uh, card shop owners that are going to get less. A lot of it is based upon your spend and how much you spend on yeah. a monthly quarterly basis and how long you've been buying from your particular distributor. So that all plays into it. But I can tell you that uh, my guy, Rocky, uh, he's been a card shop owner for seven years now uh, is a distributor also uh, for the last year or so. And as far as chilling rain goes, uh, the allocations were about 5% wow, of what he dude. was requesting. That's even worse than like so, Chappie's Path and stuff, dude. Like that's not Exactly, exactly. That's so I just, crazy. I worry, I and I, again, I cannot, I can not say this with 100% certainty, but I think a lot of people who pre-ordered chilling rain we could very well see a lot of those pre-orders get canceled i hope that's not the case like i sincerely yeah. hope that's not the case but uh we've already seen that with previous sets that have come out especially those during the pandemic where a lot of people had put in pre-orders yeah. and didn't get a single one of their products that they yeah. had pre-ordered i remember i went for which one was it the um... Shining Fates, and they told me at GameStop that people that had pre-ordered were on back order until July, which we still haven't even reached, and the set came out in February. So mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't imagine being on back order for four months, five months, waiting to to get your product on a pre-order. That's that's kind of crazy to me. Yeah. Uh, let me catch up with the chat real quick. We got Carlos in the house. What's good, Carlos? How you doing today, man? Uh, we got catch them all saying Oklahoma is pretty chill for the most part. Dude, that's because nobody lives in Oklahoma, man. Literally, you're like the only person that collects Pokemon cards over there. Yeah, I bet you go to Target and they're funny. still selling cards there. <laughs> but in Arizona, so you've been to the Grand Canyon then and the Hoover Dam? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been several times, actually, which is very funny because there's people that have lived in Arizona their entire life that have never been to the Grand really? Canyon. I, I have several crazy. friends that have lived here their entire life and have never been. I, I think I've been, uh, it's been a few years since the last time I was there. Um, but I think I've been like five times. My my wife and I here a few years ago, we did a hike called uh, Havasupai Falls, which anybody out there, you can go ahead and Google Havasupai Falls. And it's absolutely beautiful. Just like, it's almost like you hike down into the Grand Canyon and you're up in arid desert and then you hike down into the canyon. It's like you're hiking into like Hawaii. It's just <laughs> greenery everywhere. These turquoise blue waterfalls, wow. like hundred feet high. Yeah, it's it was really amazing. One of the most beautiful places that I've been to. I'll definitely have to go check out uh, check it out. But I think you lost Natasha as soon as you said hiking. Wait, so... what do you mean I like to hike? <laughs> oh, today today she went to some springs while I was at work, and she spent the entire week nervous and that she was gonna get eaten by a uh, by an alligator. But so, crocodiles and alligators, <laughs> you know, that that's a thing. You're not going to die Dude, hiking. Dude, like, like three-year-old children go swimming in those waters. Like, okay, well, you know, I it was very scary. Like the, the alligator's just going to pick her out of the bunch. It's like, oh, I want to eat that one. People have died in <laughs> Florida from crocodile attacks. <laughs> the that is a thing. <laughs> no, here, there was a news story this week. See, so that, that's just very much like very panicky when it comes to everything relating to, to nature. Oh, whatever. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I can't say that we have any alligators here. You're, you're probably worrying about maybe rattlesnakes where you're out there, maybe oh, scorpions, something like that. Oh. Yeah, just so, bring yeah. a, a little satchel. You, you can outrun those. An alligator, I think, on land can still run like 25 miles an hour or something exactly. like that. Yeah, yeah, it runs faster than you a human. See? So that that's a legitimate fear. I mean, that's a fast, dangerous What would you have done to the crocodile life? for it to kill you? I don't know, man. But then they were what like, do do? no, and my teacher friends, they were like, making the the noise of the crocodile or alligator when they're about to attack and i sw- i i thought i heard how it do you everywhere. know what noise an alligator makes when it's about to attack apparently it's like a 
I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't do it here. Anyway. <laughs> <that's strange. laughs> anyway. Uh, all right. Let's get. Let's get back into the chat. Let's start going with the questions. I'm excited to open up this pack. So, uh, first of all, let's explain how it works for anybody that might be new to the channel or for Pokemon yourself. Because I don't know if you've um, watched at least the one that we did with Jules or anything like that to like more or less know how it works. But it's a little bit confusing. So, essentially, we're gonna be asking Pokemon a question. Like, for example, uh, what is your name? And then you're going to give us three options back. And one of those mm -hmm. is your actual name. And then two of those are fake options. Yeah, he'll say like Pokenet, Pokeballers, or Collecting with Jewels. And then we would have to pick yeah, the right we, one. Yeah, we will pick the right one. But essentially, <laughs> we're not the ones choosing, okay? Yeah. You guys are choosing. So the chat votes on these. And the chat is going to vote like option one, option two, option three, or A, B, C, however you guys want to do it. And if you guys get it right... That's a point for us. We open up the pack. If you guys get it wrong, that's a point for Poganaf. He opens up his Dollar Tree pack. And at the end of the day, it would be like kind of like a mixed score of who got the most right plus who got the better pools. I will tell you, we are 0 and 5 right now or 0 and 4. Okay. This is our fifth time doing Wait, it. So the odds are stacked yeah, in my favor one. then. Yeah, the odds are definitely stacked in your favor. We have this wow. thing where we normally have like one or two packs left over by the end of the stream and we just open it up for fun here on stream and mm -hmm. we'll get like a gold card or a full art card once the pack battle is already <laughs> over on the extra packs yeah so yeah let's just say that the luck has not been in our favor um but yeah with, with that said uh let's get into question one uh how did you get into pokemon all right so for me just so I give a little bit of premise for everybody. I started back in the very beginning. So we were talking, we, we were discussing age before the podcast. And, and I'm an old fogey when compared to, to you guys. Uh, I'm 30. So I was really the prime age for Pokemon when it was released back in 1999, at least in America. Okay. So I really started from the beginning. So that was really when I got into it. But which avenue actually got me into Pokemon. Uh, was it through the TCG? Was it through the anime? Or was it through the games? Mm, that's a spicy option. Oh, that that's is spicy. Very, that's spicy. very spicy. All right, guys. So vote in the chat. Option one, did Pokemon get into the game through the TCG? Option two, did Pokemon get into the game through the video games? Or through the anime, rather. Option two, through the anime. Or mm -hmm. option three, did he get into the game through the video games? Wh which one do you guys think it is? I honestly, I think it's either one or three. I don't believe it would be through the anime. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it would be through the anime either. Yeah. I, I think it might be through... I think it, it's through the video games. Just because I'm pretty sure the Pokemon is an item in one of the Pokemon games. Yeah, it is. So... I, I think it might he's be... He's trying to put on his poker face, you know? Yeah, like, he's like, nah. oh, like, he's trying not to smile. <laughs> he's like, nah, I'm not giving anything away. Hey, Captain Muddy Games Captain is here. Captain Muddy Games is here. Uh, Jules is here. Uh, Victor is here. Hydro's here. Hey, guys, welcome all to the hey, chat. Hey, what's up, Jules? <laughs> he's like, that's a spicy meatball, he's saying. <laughs> so, okay, so we got two votes, uh, three votes for video games. We got two votes for the anime... Uh, I just feel like most people got into it through the video games, dude. I feel like card games were, were still starting to, to develop during that time. So it must have been very hard to actually get to the card game in the in the 90s. Just because like Magic the Gathering, Gathering got started in like 96, 97. Mm -hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2000. Pokemon, I think it was in Japan 96 and in the US 99. Mm -hmm. So it was very early in, in card games whereas like video games were like experiencing like a major hype already there because it was like the growth of, of video games the game boy has just got it released mm -hmm. uh jules is asking you how it's going man it's going good jules it uh it, i tell you man it's uh it's it's interesting being on a podcast and you're not actually sitting next to me and we're the ones hosting <laughs> I miss those days. I miss the days of the, the Pokemon purveyors. And it's unfortunate that Jules and I just got so busy with everything that we yeah. really couldn't, uh, you know, allocate the time towards yeah, it. It was but a good podcast too, man. It was, it yeah, was I, it was it was a lot of fun. Jules, Jules, Jules is a good guy. He's he's a good guy. I love doing that with him. Yeah, man. Yeah, he is hey, a super if, good if guy. If you guys ever bring it back, I volunteer as tribute for the comeback episode, okay? Like, let me, <laughs> let me hop in on that. <laughs> 
Well, but I say it's uh, I think three. it's three. I think it's three. So I think right now the people have voted on three. So we're going to press the button, lock it in. Option three, video games. That is correct. Hey! Ah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not going to ask you where your name actually comes from because I'm pretty sure, yeah, w that's one of the questions. But I have a, uh, guys, pay attention to what I just said, okay? <laughs> pay attention. Uh, you want to open it first? Yeah, sure. This is my favorite artwork, actually. Oh, my. Okay. There we go. Make sure to lift it up a bit. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah. just trying to open it. These are all from a booster box. You said that it was a relatively new booster box. No, they right? opened a new booster box. Oh, they box. opened a new booster box just and for I you? I told um, them that I wanted the middle, like what? Fishing? Oh, packs from, right from the middle. This is from a brand new booster box. Yeah. Let's give you guys the code card. Uh, let me, here we go. Here you guys go. And it's a Pick white code up. card. It's, so ooh. do you know the trick, Pokinav? Of course he knows the trick. Everybody knows like the trick. Like the TCGO or oh, the Redeem? The, okay, so do you know the front of the card trick? Like you can tell if it's going to be a good pull or not from the front of the card. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember the front of the card. I know like with the, the, the green and the, green white. And the yeah. white backs. So yeah. if it says TCGO right here, it means it's a hollow or better. Like right here, it says TCGO. Mm -hmm. It's a hollow or better. Uh -huh. If it says Redeem, it's a green code card. Ah, okay. Yeah, so TCGO yeah. matches up with a white code card and Redeem matches up with a green code card. So now your packs are going to be spoiled gotcha. forever and ever. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I skipped a card accidentally. It's okay. We, we only care about the last one in here. No, we don't. We, no. we have our binder. Baltoy and a what? hollow, of course. That was supposed to See, be a you... good... Well, it's a hollow. It's a hollow, but yeah. But do we need this one for our binder? Nope, we have like five of these. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I just got a double-sided sleeve. Like, I just got a sleeve that... I don't know if you guys can see through here. But it's open all the way. Oh. Oh, it's open. that's not going to do you a whole lot of good. <laughs> yeah, like, it's going to slip on the other side. <laughs> that is so strange. Funny. Uh, wow. Okay, so do you want to do you want to expand on that? Like, what were your like your first Pokemon games? Like, you start with red and and green. Yeah, yeah. So started with uh, red and blue. Had both of them. Um, can't remember which one I got first. If it was red or blue, but I do know. In fact, I still have them. Still have really? them wow. to this day. Um, started out playing those pretty much right around the time that it came out. I was I was lucky enough. Like, I really had like every gaming console. Um, and, and I, I never got it necessarily from my parents. Like my parents didn't just go out and buy it. Like I had a lot of older cousins and they would always go get it. And then I would always kind of get the, the hand-me-downs once they would yeah. upgrade to the next best system, I would get that. So I had the, the original Game Boy, you remember that big block yeah, one. Yeah. And that's what I played the original red and blue games on. And uh, kids, kids nowadays, they just don't understand like the the trials that we had to go through because you know now you've got your backlit iPads, phones, things like that. You Back then, light. it was like you had to have that light, like <laughs> flashlight. And then I remember when I got the uh, Game Boy Advance, it actually came with the clip that yeah, went on the top the of the Game Boy. Yeah. yeah, for the light, and then you could play all <laughs> night. <laughs> that, I so, loved that, my Game Boy Advance. Those were some of the best memories as a kid. Like I remember, like my parents, like walking up to my room, and I'm like, "Oh crap, I'm supposed to be sleeping right now." And just like flick it off, and like turn around to the yeah. side. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, those were the good old days, man. Yeah. They were the good yeah. old days. Now you yeah. li literally live with the phone stuck on your face all day. It's it's kind of Pretty crazy much. how society has changed. Yeah. So Jules, we actually have to go to the mailbox today. I called and it wasn't in the front office, so we have to go to the mailbox for the package. Yeah, Jules sent us a package and we, yeah. we we need to go check the mailbox. Is it an it's envelope, there. Jules? Because then it would fit in the mailbox. Yeah, if it doesn't fit in the mailbox, somebody took it while we no, were at home. No, no, don't say that. Somebody stole it. <laughs> but but yeah, today I, I, we were telling um, Pokinav that I kind of went out to the spring, so I didn't get a chance to stop by the mailbox. Yeah, we need to stop by after the podcast. Yeah. Catch them all is saying, has anyone ever seen a plain black shirt with a Pikachu peeking out of the chest pocket? I actually I've seen those type of, sh of shirts, but I've never seen the one with a Pikachu specifically. I think that that mm, that's pretty cool. I'm actually. not that's sure. A, that that would be a cool sure. shirt to get. Fishing is, uh, he says, those are pretty nails. What is what is? Everybody comments on your nails. Yeah. I need to do my nails too, so you I can get compliments too. too. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get that manicure, man. Yeah, yeah. Gotta, yeah get dude, it. Gotta, gotta take care of myself, man. <laughs> and okay, it's a big especially when though. you're a pokey tuber, right? Like your hands. That's like that's like your dude, money maker. Honest, right? I guess subconscious of that, dude. I'm like, okay, like every time before every video, I need to clip my nails. I need to make sure everything is good. 
Mm-hmm. Like, guys need to look healthy, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think I remember, like, watching one of uh, Leonhardt's videos uh, from back when, and he kind of slipped in there that he got manicures so that his hands look good. And he was like, I don't know why I told you guys that, but <laughs> I do. <laughs> But it makes sense, right? It no, makes it, sense. it does. It's like, always I mean, in front of the camera. Yeah, like I, I, honestly, like with with like people that do this as a job, it's pretty much a hand model at this point. Like mm-hmm. you have to make sure that your hands yeah. are, are really well taken care of. Um, but Jules is saying that it's in an envelope, so we should have gotten it. Then it's in the mail okay, for perfect. sure. Perfect. So that's one less worry. Um, okay, are you are you ready for question number two? Are you getting more or less the hang of it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'm ready. Okay, okay, he's ready. He's ready. Let's see if all his his options are as sneaky as that first um, question uh, was. Why did you start creating content? Why did I start creating content? Okay, so here we go. First one is to become a famous YouTuber. That's actually a um, a goal that I've had for quite some time was to be a, a famous YouTuber, to get my name out there via YouTube, to make YouTube my full-time job. So that is that is answer number one. The second one is that I wanted to be able to share a financial perspective on Pokemon to bring a little bit yeah. of a different dimension to the Pokemon hobby, something that's not always talked about, but I think is very important, especially when it comes to investing in Pokemon um, and, and spending money on larger priced items. And then the last one is uh, I have a really sincere passion for editing videos. I it's something that I've done for a while, and uh, I really enjoyed editing videos. And I thought, well, why don't I start making videos and editing videos that I'm actually creating myself? Okay. I think it's one. Okay, so one to become a big YouTuber. He wanted yeah, to be a pro YouTuber, YouTuber, guys. Like us. Uh, option number two was to help people understand the Pokemon market better and like teach people about Pokemon economics and investing. It could be one or two. Or three, uh, to edit videos. He enjoys editing videos. He wanted to just you know. I don't do think it. anyone enjoys editing videos. Yeezy that is did surprisingly. No Literally, really? when we had Yeezy on the show, oh, Yeezy was the true. first guest we had here, and that was actually his answer. His answer was that he enjoys three making is definitely videos. Definitely a lie. <laughs> yeah, three is definitely a lie. Says Jules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, we hate editing. editing we even get mad part. at each other because I have to edit one and he has to edit the other, yeah. and it's honestly mm-hmm. a pain it's in a pain, the butt. Dude. So it's is, either one or two. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's. I, I guess it's all in the eye of the beholder. You know, it's uh, when you when you're crafting something, right? You're you're crafting something, and you want this this gift to the community to be something genuine and something something golden. It's almost like your baby, and you've cultivated this from the beginning, and so everything that goes into that editing process is what you're delivering. He's as getting too philosophical. Product. He's yeah, getting too philosophical. He's trying to sell Yeah, he's trying to sell it. To us. <laughs> yeah, he's he's to sell it so it's not gonna work. <laughs> So I think it's going to be either one or two, but let's just go with one. You think it's going to be one? Uh, I mean, I can see one, but the thing is, and I did a little bit of snooping around. I literally went back to like your first ever upload and stuff. I was like looking into, I was like, bro, like did he just start doing like investing, you know, when the hype came on? But no, he's been doing investing videos since the the beginning of his channel. So, oh, so, so since be before too. Logan Paul came in, since before like all the hype that got started, since before Charles was selling for the price of a mansion. He, he was already doing investment videos. Mm, Jules so, says too. Yeah, I think it's two as I well. I think that Jules is going to make us win all the questions. I mean, hey, if there's anybody on YouTube that knows Pokenav, it's Jules. So. <laughs> I, I think it's option two. We got right now two votes for three for the editing, ironically. Uh, one vote for one. And then a vote for two from Jules. Catch him also Any, that he loves to edit. Anybody anybody want to change their vote? <clears throat> uh, Catch him all and um, Thanu. You guys want to change your votes to maybe two or one? Because I honestly do not think it's three. Let's go with Jules. Okay, okay. So we're going for two. Two. We're going we're gonna to lock it in. Boom. Two. Um, you did it because you wanted to teach people about the market. Well, I can tell you that... I love numbers, so I love talking about investing. That is correct. Yeah, there we go. There we go. See, I knew that. <laughs> like, honestly, it's one of those things where, like, number one, 
everybody wants to do number one. You get me? Like everybody wants to make money mm-hmm. out of YouTube. Everybody, like if this could be your job, you want this to be your job because you don't have to mm-hmm. w- work on their hours. You don't have to follow anybody's footsteps. You don't have a boss. So like, it's kind of like a stepping stone to get there. And like, he's doing it with mm-hmm. something that he, he enjoys. Yeah. So I think that the, I wish that we could have had a channel where we could eat at different restaurants and then there's people that do we that we famous. just we chose the wrong niche <laughs> <laughs> we chose the wrong niche that would be great okay got them order for two as well okay all right, so, so you're back for us it up now. oh we're gonna have to run out of we're gonna run out of packs we're gonna have to <laughs> open up another etv all right i'm not even gonna look at what it is oh man and then we'll show the code card two, after three, four okay so we got uh can you guys see fighting energy yeah. there we go we got a scroll of swirls, a bufalant. I don't know why I'm used to having it on the other side. It's like what, mirrored. the camera's right there. Yeah, no, no, it's like, it's mirrored. It's weird. Crawdont, Mr. Mime, Onyx, It's okay, Brad. You're, you're here. Spiro, That's all that matters. Sizzlypede, Shinx, Reverse Conkelder, and... Hey! Oh, Ooh, Cricketoon V. Cricketoon v. How so many do we have of those? This one, we have like eight of them. So, there we go. Cricketoon V. <laughs> Uh, it's a spicy pool. It's just, hey, it's it's good. At least we, we have a pool now, okay? Battle Styles has not been kind to us. This past few weeks, we packed the Tyranitar on the first week it released. Yeah. But, yeah, this past few weeks has definitely nice. not been Nicely good done. Jewel yeah, says that's that literally the best card we've ever pulled. <laughs> that you guys are opening more Battle Styles. I hope these packs have crazy pulls. Same Jewels. Hopefully, man. Same. Hopefully. What are the odds that with Jewels, the same thing happened mm-hmm. where we lost a pack battle and then we packed a full art Phoebe? Literally, <laughs> the next pack after the pack battle ended. Yeah. Uh, okay. So well, I'll tell you what. To... I what I'm hoping, what I'm really hoping is I can open one of these and get like a gold Azashian or Zamazenta out of these Sword and Shield so, base sets. How cool would that be? Out of so, a, that would out be of a dollar pack. How would you feel if I told you that the reason that we do Pokemon content is because in the middle of quarantine, I, I'm really into Yu-Gi-Oh. Like I used to play like competitive Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? Let's give Pokemon a chance. I love the video games. So like, let me try out the card game. And we got an ETB of Sword and Shield. This was like mid-May, early May of last year. Mm-hmm. And on the first back in that ETB, I pulled the, I pulled the Golden Sashin. And that's the reason, the only reason that I'm into Pokemon. And I was like, you know what? Like, if packs wow. are gonna give out like this, I might as well just get into it because in Yu-Gi-Oh, I've never had this luck. So we started mm-hmm. getting more and more Pokemon cards, got into the card game, started following like Nate and Leonhardt and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. yeah, now now and now we do this. So that one pack, literally my first ever Pokemon pack, pretty much changed that, everything. That's why you guys are the Pokeballers and not the Yugi Ballers. Yeah, exactly, dude. Like imagine <laughs> being the Yugi Ballers, dude. No, uh, I would not be. Dude, I would hey, not Yu-Gi-Oh, have been the Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards Ballers. Are pretty man. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Are, yeah. I, I wish they made full art Yu-Gi-Oh cards, bro, because Yu-Gi-Oh cards have the best artwork by far. Yeah. You, you know, and what's funny is, um, so before I started, uh, this whole business venture of, of selling and, and, uh, um, specifically modern products and getting more into the current business venture that I'm starting, um, I really wasn't into any other TCGs other than Pokemon. You know, I paid attention to a few things, some like the higher end type of products from like magic, you know, the black Lotus, all those different yeah. things. Um, but now I'm a little more privy to a, a lot of the other TCGs out there and a little more aware of, there's a lot of beautiful cards in, I've seen a bunch in Yu-Gi-Oh! Digimon has a yeah, lot of Digimon really cool cards. Crazy. Dragon Ball Super, Dude, I tell you, Dragon Ball Super is and stuff killing too. the game. It's nuts, yeah. it's nuts. Like, Dragon Ball Z cards are next level, man. Maybe that should like, be our next mm-hmm. Maybe that should be, yeah, like, because Dragon Ball Z cards are just insane. Like, I, I thought Pokemon cards were pretty, but Dragon Ball Z cards are just insanely nice well and here's here's an interesting here's an interesting fact so this isn't actually a uh, a question for tonight so i can go ahead and give you fill you guys in on this one but i actually from my childhood i actually have more score entertainment dragon ball z cards than i do pokemon i have a bunch of pokemon cards from Mm. my childhood but i've got i don't know how many binders do i have in storage probably seven eight huge binders full of old score wow. entertainment dragon ball z cards and wow. beckett and psa are both grading those now which they weren't wow. for the longest time because That's it was great. essentially a dead hobby 
See, that, that's the downside of growing up in Europe. We didn't get any of those. At least in Spain, we didn't get any of those, dude. Yeah. So. <laughs> in Spain, we got Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! And I don't even remember ever seeing Magic at the, the card shops in, in Spain when I was growing up. So yeah, Pokemon, no. Yu-Gi-Oh! And that was mm-hmm. pretty much it. That's all we had. I remember Digimon. Yeah. Digimon was, uh, was kind of... But the Digimon cards, popular. they were weird. Like, Digimon cards were out for like two years or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they just completely got pulled out of the market. And then they just got released again this year, last yeah. year. So, yeah, yeah. Well, Dragon Ball Z, or uh, yeah, the Dragon Ball Z, the score entertainment cards. Yeah. Um, it had a very short run as well. I think it was maybe, maybe like two or three years that it ran for. Um, but that was the next step for me as I started to, I started to outgrow Pokemon. You know, as you're starting to grow up, Pokemon yeah. wasn't necessarily the cool thing anymore. Yeah. And the next thing that at least uh, for me and, and a lot of the the guys that I hung out with. The next thing was Dragon Ball Z. That's what we all kind of migrated to. Yeah. And uh, the the TCG came out right around that time. Or I should say CCG. It was the collectible card the game. Collectible card game, yeah. And then on top of that, I don't know if you guys know this, but one of the other really big animes, probably one of the most popular animes in America right now behind Pokemon, uh, My Hero Academia, yeah. they are coming out with their TCG, I believe, in... Oh, uh, wow. I believe in August is when wow. they will release essentially their their alpha or their their base set uh, booster boxes. So we uh, we plan on getting a lot of those uh, for for August. Dude, even right now, um, I don't know if you how, like if you're familiar with like esports in general, like like video game esports and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's gotten to the point where TCG markets are so insane right now that Call of Duty is releasing on um, upper deck made uh, TCG based on Call of Duty professional players. So you wow. can get like like 99 rated Call of Duty professional rated cards. Kind of like if it was like a sports game, like a FIFA or a Madden or mm-hmm. NBA, but like real life TCG um, physical cards on based on Call of Duty professional players, which wow. is That's something insane. that I would have never thought about. Like, but just oh, for sure. Just like on the state that cards are in right now, like collectibles are next level. So mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, it, it's kind of crazy to, to think about. Yeah, it is. But mm-hmm. let's move on to question three. Besides Pokemon, what other hobby do you have? So yeah, I I am a, a well you know much in the same way that you know I said I was uh, into investments and I like to keep my investments diversified. I like to keep my hobbies diversified as well. So beyond Pokemon, one of my big hobbies is playing the bagpipes. So I am almost. I am predominantly Scottish. My ancestry is predominantly Scottish. So I started to pick up the pipes when I was probably around 10 years old and uh, have been playing them ever since. So uh, in fact, I play them at uh, different events, uh, the Scottish festivals here in the Phoenix area. I'll play them for that. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun doing that, meeting a lot of people within the, the Scottish community. Um, other than that, another big hobby of mine is traveling, uh, big, big traveler. Uh, my wife and I both love to travel. We've been to, I personally have been to all 50 States within the, uh, United wow. States, I've wow. uh, been to Canada, been to Mexico, um, where else pretty much across Europe, um, Spain, we've been to Spain as well. My wife and I both been to Spain, love Spain absolutely love spain um so yeah traveling uh big big hobby of mine obviously it put a little bit of a damper on it this last year yeah. so i wasn't able to fulfill that but definitely like to get out and travel and the last one here um i do have a, a sharp eye not just for the pokemon market but i'm also a professional skeet shooter as well Ooh. so enjoy skeet shooting uh in my spare time and uh, really sharpening my skills in that arena okay wow those were okay. like they, you they were everywhere. so many yeah, it was details everywhere. of each it that i could everywhere. believe that no, each I think, of those I are your hobbies i think he's trolling on the bagpipes he's 100 percent trolling on the bagpipes dude i cannot picture pokemon just walking around in a kilt playing the bagpipes man I... that's funny <laughs> uh, <laughs> i could be, i could be wearing a kilt right now you never honestly know. We, we could we, you could be you could be honestly um, um would traveling be considered a hobby yeah yeah yeah, okay. people, yeah like, like for fun he wants to go traveling yeah 
All uh, 50 states. That is crazy. crazy. I have yeah. a friend, I guess, um, during COVID, I, I believe that he lost his job, like him and his wife. So they bought mm-hmm. an RV, they rented out their home, and they have literally since traveled all 50 states together. Yeah. Like, That's awesome. On their RV. That's awesome. That is crazy mm. they literally like i see all of their adventures on snapchat it's pretty okay crazy. guys so options one the bagpipes option two traveling option three ski shooter so what do you guys think let's catch up a little bit with the the chat too i feel like we've been ignoring these people a little bit and uh, i think i think brad is asking if i've been to uh miami, miami. florida I have in fact i've actually been to miami several times because uh, we've done several cruises out of miami and i have to say one of my favorite places in all of florida is uh little havana Really? Love little Havana. Oh, oh so we're from Miami. Yeah, don't tell me that. Miami, yeah, tell me that. Well, that... technically, like we we moved to Orlando from Miami. We used to live in Miami before. Yeah. And mm-hmm. honestly, dude, I I am a hundred percent against Miami, dude. I'm one of those. People no, that I no. Hate Miami. <laughs> have you have you gone to Domino Park in Miami? Domino Park. Uh, so specific. That one doesn't ring it's a bell. <laughs> well, Domino Park is like where all of the old people... old Cuban men are playing dominoes mm-hmm. and smoking cigars in the middle yeah, of the yeah. street and stuff like yeah i love little havana too well i really yeah, like that vibe. I, yeah. I, I don't like miami i think miami vibes are cool for going down for a weekend and partying up you know doing mm-hmm. miami stuff in miami but living in miami is just a different world dude and, oh you know, i can imagine yeah i, I can ima- i can definitely see that but i liked a uh, little havana it's just its own little eclectic yeah. uh neighborhoods and, and and its own scene and it, it's like no matter where you where you went you smelled the, the aroma of like cigars <laughs> of cuban food of yeah. coffee and i just yeah. i just loved it yeah yeah my parents are cuban well his parents well one his mom well, my mom is, is cuban, cuban yeah. but yeah we're cuban mm-hmm. and i love all of that i do i oh, it's yeah. like it's like like just exciting it is it and is. this is my mm-hmm. dog do you have any pets i do uh, yeah we ha- we have a dog about that size a little pomeranian named odin oh. Oh, oh so cute. <laughs> that is so adorable. Guys, guys, don't forget, you guys have to vote. Um, hi, ASX. Hi, Rene. How are you guys doing tonight? Um, you guys have to vote. Option one, bagpipes. Option two, traveling. Option three, um, skeet shooter. Okay, guys, remember to vote in the chat. I'm going to say two. You're going to say two. Because I'm saying two. He's as even well. been traveling like on a cruise. Bro, you gave too many details there. Yeah, I mean, even then, when he said that, that him and his wife went through the, the Grand Canyon. Uh, oh, the hiking yeah the hiking like he, he he does give me like adventurer vibes like so he's... do you take the kids with you like while, when you travel yeah so uh, my daughter is almost three so you know the, right after she was born we didn't travel that much um and then covid hit which took out basically an entire year yeah. so but we have been with her we've been to uh, a few other states with her but we we fully plan on on taking them everywhere everywhere we go we've got our i was telling you guys i think before the podcast we've got another baby on the way that's due here in just a few weeks so we're going to be busy once again so i'm going to ask you before we go uh and look at the um the answers the answers what guess what i'm gonna ask yes what sign are you what sign are you oh the star speaker Yes, I am a Sagittarius, <laughs> the most philosophical of all the signs, a Sagittarius. Are you for, I would have never guessed. Wow. Mm-hmm. I would have never guessed that. because the stars are lying, okay? Like, those <laughs> things don't matter. So you're in the beginning of December, end of November? Yep, yep, yep. November 27th. Wow. wow. I would have, oh, so Thanksgiving. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. birthday always, found, always falls uh, sometimes it falls on Thanksgiving, but always right around Thanksgiving. Wow, dude. Oh, wow. You're going to have Black Friday presents, bro. <laughs> yeah, <Black Friday. laughs> Very true. Yeah, exactly. Okay, wow. so people seem to be going with... Uh, Jules, do not answer Jules, because now we're going to run out of packs, okay? We're, we're <laughs> going we're gonna to run out of packs. Uh, Funhouse is here. He's saying congrats on the new edition. So, hey, TCG uh, Funhouse. What's going on, man? It's good to have yeah. you in here. Travis... So Jeb says one, fishing says one, yeah. and Jules is like, should I answer? No, no, no Jules, you should not answer because then we're gonna run. No, out Jules, so you gotta keep quiet. <laughs> Brad is saying travel, so the one we're traveling. 
Okay, so, so, so far, we have two ones. Yeah, so, one, so far, two. people are deciding on the ones. I'm, let's give you guys another 30 seconds to decide. Uh, I'm going to say two, but because Jubs and Fishing say one, I'll go with the majority. You're going to go with the bagpipes? Dude, he's trolling. Like he, they're literally saying that. I know, that. but but let's let ha, let him uh, open a pack. <laughs> let, let, they're literally saying that because if it is if it is true, I would just I, I wouldn't know how to react honestly. Dude, I, I honestly can't see you backpiping around, dude. I can't. I can't. Well, I want I I, I want to know why we just completely wrote off that he's a, a skeet shooter. What is skeet? Okay, so Being they throw skeet, like, a I thought like, it was when the dog kind of like. No, 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 no. They, rubs his butt on the ground. <laughs> Skid <What>? mark. <laughs> we just, oh. we just said that live. I can't say that's know. one of my hobbies. <laughs> we just said, like you said, poking up. You're like, <laughs> no, I just, I, oh did, I don't know what it is. No, dude, no. Uh, options for Funhouse are he plays the bagpipes. Like this is the question is, uh, what is his hobby besides Pokemon? So playing the bagpipes, traveling, or uh, skeet shooter. Skeet what is, is skeet? when you have a shotgun. And they like uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the one that they, they launched the, the clay oh, birds, clay? and, and you have to shoot them. them, right? That's that's oh. key. Right. I'm pretty sure right. it is. So yeah, no, it's not dragging his ass on the floor. No. Like, come <laughs> on, you said a bad word. <laughs> oh, I'm the one. Word. I'm the one that's said, getting in trouble. I said the. Butt. We'll, we'll edit it out in the replay, right? Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll it mute it. We'll add the beep. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, my God. Oh, he's a skeet shooter, hundred percent. says funhouse. So we have one for skeet. We have two for bagpipe player, and we have one for traveling. Oh, oh, oh. Sends, ask him what size choke does he shoot with? Ooh. Can I give away that kind of information? That's, that's <laughs> kind of... Uh, so within the world of skeet shooting, that's actually something that we don't like to... We don't really like to give out. Nah, he's trolling. He's trolling. He doesn't, it's not that one, guys. Don't vote for three. He's trolling. Look at him. He's smiling. That bagpipes, bagpipes. everybody's dude. Okay, so bagpipes. Yeah, let's lock it in. Bagpipes. Okay, you're a bagpipe player. It's two, but bagpipes. Bagpipes. Well, sorry, no, yeah. it's not bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. It's traveling. Traveling yeah. is one of my uh, big hobbies, and one of the reasons why I think my my wife and I we got along so well uh, when we first met was that we both loved to travel. And right away, I think like our first date, I almost killed her because we uh, we went on a hike, actually. We were, we were going on a hike and uh, I thought that the hike was going to be like six miles or so. Well, we ended up getting lost and it was more like 18 miles that we ended up hiking. That would have so, on your first date? Again, on our first date, yeah. So much like you guys, who I was talking to you before the podcast, you know, you you broke his finger, right? Yeah. On, the, on like the first date. Yeah, well, I almost killed my wife and uh, I think that is the the makings of a, of a great relationship. It caused a little bit of pain and they yeah. still stick around, you know, they'll be around forever. That is so <laughs> funny. That's crazy. I would have been so All right. mad. Yeah, so gonna... let's see what packs do I have? I'll let you guys pick the artwork that you want to go with. So we've got these three here and hopefully it is always weird opening it up to uh, the camera. Like I want this. you to get the session. So let's open up the session pack. Can there be a session in a session pack? You never know. See, these people are putting the backpipes like they're trolling. dude. <laughs> That is so funny. I actually, I actually really do love the bagpipes. You guys you asked my wife, you can vouch on this, but I do love uh, the bagpipes as an instrument. We have something here in Arizona called the uh, Renaissance Festival, and yeah. they oh, always yeah. have like a big like bagpipe and the whole Scottish thing going on. But I, I truly am uh, predominantly Scottish. That is, that is the truth. <laughs> but I've, I've never played the bagpipes. <laughs> All right, here we go. All nom right. Nom. You guys will have to help me out. Yes, Nom, my while, and uh, oh, it's Drizzle. A, Drizzle. Drizzle. I think that's that's just an uncommon. That's an uncommon. So, yeah. That's a problem with uh, Dollar, Tree with Dollar Tree packs. Yeah, you're not guaranteed. You can get anything. everything, but the majority of the time, it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, and when's your wife's birthday, or what is her sign? My wife is an Aries. Bet. Money, that's it. Yeah, you, you guys are a perfect match. Aries and Sagittarius. Even though that was my mom mm -hmm. and my dad. and But you guys are like very tough people. 
She's what? a mm-hmm. she must be a very tough person too. Like that's a that's, those are two strong signs. I'm a Pisces, so I'm very so like. So she cries a lot. Yeah, I do cry. Mm-hmm. It's okay. I'm emotional. <laughs> trying to that's remember, Pisces Pisces is March. Uh, like early February. March, late February. Yeah. February. Yeah. Okay. I think I think my mom. My, I think my mom is a Pisces. And then my daughter is a Virgo. And then I believe our son, depending on when he's born, I think he should still fall in the cancer sign. So as far as I know, I because I check him too, I, I think all of those signs should coincide pretty well, which is yeah, funny because my my immediate family, my family, uh, I don't think any of our signs, like my my dad's a Capricorn, I'm a Sagittarius, my sister is a, that's a she is late yeah she's late january and so she's a capricorn um and, and then wow so your mom's... dad is a capricorn your mom's a pisces which is another great match and you and your wife are a great match we are not a great match yeah. as much as i love him <laughs> he's an aries and i'm a pisces and like mm-hmm. mm, he's not oh he's a too tough Farnhouse said, it's a trick yeah. question because in reality, he loves to travel to places that have skate shooting ranges while he plays the bagpipes on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> and they were all true. A little bit of truth in everyone. And then Farnhouse is also saying, I cry a lot, Nat. Don't worry. Every single time I open a pack, I don't get a hollow. Dude, <laughs> dude, if you were living in our household, household, like you literally could fill a bucket full of tears, dude. And he's a Capricorn TC um, uh, Travis. Okay, so Rene, it says that he's a Libra dating our married to a Scorpio. Okay. Yeah. Is that a good match? Mm-hmm. Uh, Libra My sister's a Scorpio. And Scorpio? Mm. Huh? Scorpios are with Cancers, Pisces, Capricorn. Because we're all the emotional signs, but Scorpio is one of the tougher of the See, emotional Scorpios signs. are with, with Cancers because Cancers are crab, and then Scorpio is uh, a Scorpion. Yeah, has like, like a little. little... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's they so can funny. duel with each other. <laughs> I love that. That is, I, I don't know why I love asking about that. So, so That's sorry like for this That's like her go-to on everything. So, yeah. anyway, going back to the stream, uh, if you weren't creating Pokemon content, what kind of uh, content would you create? Yeah, so beyond Pokemon, uh, I guess this is kind of more towards interest, right? Um, one of the other things that I would love to have been able to create content for is fitness. Um always been very cognizant of my health, uh, wellness and fitness. And so the, the next option for me, if it wasn't Pokemon was creating content around fitness and being healthy. The other one, I love cooking and I love I all things culinary and, uh, you would choose that too. <laughs> and so and, and I love to I love preparing meals for my family and, uh, you know, being able to showcase that you don't see a whole lot of YouTubers out there in the culinary space, at least from the male perspective. Um, so that would be the next thing is is being able to showcase my expertise in the kitchen. And then the final one here would be uh, business, just basically showing how I've been able to build various businesses in the past, um, current businesses that I have, the trials, the tribulations, the things that I've done wrong, the things that I've done right, so that people can learn from those mistakes and not make them themselves. Fishing says, I love fitness, fitness burger in my mouth. Fitness burger in my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) So, okay. So uh, guys, option number one, fitness. I would say three. Option number two, cooking. Option number three, business. Um, so from knowing you, I, I've seen your thumbnails. I know you're buff. I know you're ripped. I know, I know you do take, yeah. take care of yourself. I would say it's either one or three, but I do think that at least from, from talking to you, you have more of a passion for, for just business and marketing and, and investing all together. Um, that, that side of things. So I would definitely say, I would definitely say option three um, Brad is asking you where you got the big Pikachu from. The Colonel Pikachu. Yes, Colonel Pikachu. Um, I actually have to thank my mom for this one. She found it at, I believe, a swap meet somewhere. And uh, it, she was actually going to, to get it for my nieces. And I said, no, 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 no. That's that big me. Pikachu has got to go in my background. <laughs> <laughs> so That's yes, so Pokey Nav, he is a he is a heartless soul and, and took the Pikachu <laughs> from his own niece. Oh, that is so funny. And you uh, see, your mom the Pisces was like, Yes, son, you can have the Pikachu. 
because she's oh, a course, loving, giving person. Because that's uh, what Pisces uh, are. Pisces just cry a lot. Yeah, we do. That's fine. We're in touch with our emotional so, side. We got Kachamal <laughs> saying option one. Uh, Fauna saying option three. Jules is saying, actually stuck on this one. One or three. So Jules doesn't know. So it's evenly matched. So that means that uh, he's he is into fitness. So it's like a partial truth. Yeah. Okay. Then Brad is asking, what is three? Three is business, Brad. Jobs is saying three. Fishing is saying three. Stan was saying three. Uh, Catch is saying, uh, Pokenav, did you have a GameCube ever while growing up? I'm sorry? Uh, uh, Catch is asking you if you ever had a GameCube growing up. Oh, yeah. For sure had the GameCube. Um, I'm trying to remember like some of the big games that were on the GameCube that we had. GameCube was kind of, I, I don't know if you guys remember it at all, but it was kind of a bummer. Yeah. of a of a gaming system yeah. from from what i can i, I never had it just because like i felt like there weren't ever enough games for it dude like there were like 20 yeah. 30 40 games that i, ever I got. loved my and i still have my gamecube i love my game like I the love only reason Luigi's i wanted a gamecube Mansion. the only reason i wanted a gamecube was for the the couple Spiral. of pokemon games that got released on it and even then they weren't even that good on pokemon Spiral? games to my knowledge Maybe so not. Yeah, what what were what were the maybe the chat can let us know about this one. What were the Pokemon games uh, that were Pokemon out on the GameCube? Stadium, Cube? I think Pokemon Stadium. Uh, was it? Catch them also Zelda. Zelda, yeah, Zelda was in there. Oh, uh, you can't forget about Zelda. Was yeah. it? Uh, no, I think, not, I think that's the whole time? reason why I got a GameCube. That, I'll tell you what, that's the whole reason that I got a uh, Wii. Was because I that was the only system that the the Zelda. Zelda game was on. Yeah. So I got a Wii just for that. <laughs> But I, I could have sworn it was either Pokemon Stadium or the Pokemon XD. It was, it was one of those two. It was in the GameCube, mm. if not both. And then, yeah, Zelda, was it? No, it wasn't Majora's Mask. Or um, what's the other one? Ocarina of Time. Was it Ocarina of Time? No, Ocarina of Time was for the 64? Or was it for the GameCube? No, 64. 64, yeah. yeah. I think GameCube, wasn't it like, uh, wasn't there one called like Wind Waker? Something like that? Some, I think that was it. It had yeah, it had Pokemon interesting Snap. graphics on it. It was kind of Pokemon very Snap. very animated. No. Pokemon Snap was sixty four. Oh, okay. Ca Coliseum. There we go. Victor saying Coliseum. Pokemon Coliseum. There we go. I know. I know those oh, yeah. spinoffs. So Coliseum. But okay, I think going back to the question, I think the answer that people are going for is um, three. So we're gonna so, lock in three. So business. Boom. Even business. Fun, you would have a business channel for sure. He's like even the way he speaks, he's like a motivational speaker. So <laughs> <laughs> business. So you guys think I'm a businessman? Yeah. Yes. That is correct. Hey! Yes, it is. Hey! Here you go. Actually, let, let's let you choose. We have five remaining. One through five. Oh, we're gonna let Pokemon choose. Oh. One through five, <laughs> or if you wanna pick the artworks, we got one red bear, Ooh. two water bears, a tyranitar, and an Empoleon, I think. So let's uh let's go with the dark horse. Let's go with the Empoleon. Nobody expects Ooh, anything good from the Empoleon. <laughs> yeah, nobody expects anything from Empoleon. So that's so horrible. Poor penguin. Right? Penguin? Yeah, it is a penguin. It's he, an emperor penguin. He's a yeah. big penguin. Yeah. Big boy. Um first five uh, main spin-off games for broken up. So Brad wants to know what are the first five mainline and um and non-main series Pokemon games you've played. Um, so I red and blue, obviously we already said that's where I started and then went into, um, gold, silver, crystal, which those are like my favorite games of all time. Oh, oh, oh my single God. strike. Is that, is that the alternate? Do you guys have that one yet? Is, if it's the alternate, we do. Uh, it is not the alternate. So this we're actually missing. It's the last fighting. Oh, really? It's the last nice. fighting one we needed for the collection. That's awesome. So we have all the fighting Pokemon now and complete. Here is the code card. Wow! So Very you picked cool. the right packs from the booster box, man. Yes, he did. Wow. Well, he also picked wow. the right pack. Yeah, to yeah. Open. Napoleon, dude. Nobody expects anything from uh, Napoleon. Yeah, yeah, I told you. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's um, so awesome. But yeah, going so, back to your question, yeah, the the, the games. Red and blue, uh, gold and silver, crystal. I think those are the best Pokemon games that have ever been made, in my opinion. Um, played the, um, what was the next one after that? Ruby and Sapphire, uh, played those. And then I kind of got out of it. Um, but then going to the 64, I loved Pokemon Stadium, played uh, Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Stadium 2, uh, Pokemon Snap, obviously. Um, what else? I'm trying to think of anything that was like, 
not that well known that I was playing. I think that's about it. And then, you, you know, periodically here and there. Maybe no, no, years. never, never really. Like I, when I got out of Pokemon, like I was out pretty hard. So the only thing that I was really following was uh, the anime. So I've all, I've always watched the anime. Something that people who watch my channel will know is I got out of the TCG and, and out of the games, but I always kind of followed the, the anime. And what's funny is before starting my YouTube channel, my only, well, I, actually I shouldn't say my YouTube channel, but before getting back into Pokemon in 2016, uh, early 2016, my only real experience with Pokemon and YouTube in the same sentence is I used to go onto YouTube and try to find the original episodes. And wow. what's funny is that because it wasn't anywhere, you unless you were getting it on DVD or yeah. even back then, even VHS was still around. Um, <laughs> you you couldn't find the the episodes anywhere. So I would go onto YouTube, and every single episode there was like, oh my god, there was like 10, 15 clips that you had to watch in order to complete a full episode because they would always dude. break That's them up so that they could actually play them. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would have to go through all those clips to watch a, a single Aww. episode. That, that was me with Naruto, dude. Trying to follow up 500 and something episodes of Naruto yeah. through like 15 minute YouTube clips. But yeah, so I definitely or, feel or, this or, or sometimes they would have the full episode, but then the whole like the episode itself would be playing in like this really small corner of yeah. the screen, and then the rest <laughs> of it would just be some kind of background. So you had to like zoom in. Yeah, yeah. Those were the struggle. I tell you guys, rough, it used to be a struggle. Pokemon used to be a struggle. You guys rough. think you're struggling now? It used to be really rough. <laughs> and you're an '80s baby, right? Because are you gonna turn 30 or are you no, turning 30 31? Right. 90. So I was born in 90. Oh, Ooh, right 90. Oh my gosh, I don't know how to subtract. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, it, it would be impossible for him if I, he's 30 too. No, because I don't know what, what I thought, how old I was. Because like, I'm 29, so I'm a 92. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what happened. Yeah. I had a huge... <laughs> I'm, a, I'm tired. Anyway, uh, let's move away from that one. Going back to where does, your, where does your YouTube name come from? Yes, the YouTube name Pokenab. Where is that derived from? What is the origin story of Pokenab? <laughs> so the first one here is that it is an item in the games. We've been talking a lot about the games and the red and blue, and, but Pokenav, I don't know. Item in the games, do you guys remember an item in the games? Pokenav? I don't think so. it, it doesn't ring a bell, do not. Uh, I, don't, I don't, maybe, it could have so, been. Yeah, you know, that some, something to keep in the back of your mind as you're coming to your determination is it's an item in the games and that's where I got the name for the channel. Uh, the next one is that it's a passage from a book, very old, ancient text speaking of the coming of the Pokenav. And uh, that's that's where I got a lot of my influence from. Uh, really went back, went back into the old text to pull out the, the Pokenav name. And then the last one is a mission statement that Pokenav itself is not so much inherently in the the name or anything superficial, but it's more or less derived from the mission statement that the Pokenav channel embodies. Oh. I would say one. Really? Would you say one? <laughs> uh, guys, options. Uh, option one, Pokenav because of the video games. Option two, Pokenav because of the video games. Or option three, poke enough because of the video games. <laughs> okay, guys. So no, you can't say that because then they're <laughs> no, gonna be doing because, the yeah, two yeah. and the three. So option one, guys, poke enough because of the video games. Option two, uh, because of an ancient text that predicted the poke enough. Or option three, it's his mission statement. Catch them all says it's three. Oh, the camera just moved. Now we're showing the wall. Oh, oh I wonder YouTubers. how it moved. Look at way we're turning the the, oh, okay. the camera. Yeah, we have like Pokemon a square. navies. Victor says it means Pokemon navy. <laughs> well, maybe his name begins with a like or has like maybe the first three letters mean something to him. Of Pokemon. No, and nav. Because why no, Pokemon nav? It's it's in the video. Games. I know, but I'm just saying like. Why are you maybe... trying to deviate these people? They, they're voting for three, dude. They're voting for three. Uh... <laughs> Then Brad is voting for two. Come on, guys. Oh, wow. Justin voted one. 
surprised. I think he just want to hand you a pack, honestly, dude. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to give you a pack. <laughs> Pokemon Navigation is what it stands for, Pokemon Journey. Yeah, it, it's his journey on YouTube, right? That's his mission statement. <laughs> so one, two, three. We have one of each. No, no, we have two for three. Uh, oh, Gotcha Mall and three. Fishing voted for three. Okay, what do you vote for? Uh, my vote doesn't doesn't matter. Our vote doesn't matter because it will be a tie. Oh, and it's a tie anyway. One. And Justin, oh, Justin. <laughs> oh, he changed it Justin to changed three. his vote to three. But we're going to take his first vote. I'm going to take Victor's vote on uh, one. No, no, choose, choose okay, three. Okay, okay, so they're going for three. We got three votes for three. three. So we're going to lock in three, which is your mission statement. <laughs> The mission statement. So you guys, you guys are going a little uh, off the rails on this one. Going with, going for the non-obvious answer, and I have to tell you guys, you are correct. No way. No. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Are you for yeah. real? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pokenav is so it, here. Here it is. This one was a little tricky, right? Because Pokenav is in fact an item in the games. You can find it in Generation 3 in Ruby and Sapphire. It was an item that you could use to, correct me if I'm wrong guys, the chat or, or you guys as well, but it was a tool that you could use to tell what a Pokemon was feeling. It yeah. actually had uh, nothing to do. I'm up in the chat right now. So yeah, it, that, that yeah. is indeed correct, yeah. yeah. So it is in fact an item in the games, but I wanted to throw you guys off with that one because Pokenav is in fact just the mission statement. So my slogan on my channel is navigating the world of Pokemon one video at a time. So my wow. goal with the channel has always been to try to bring this diverse hobby of Pokemon. Wow. And especially when it comes to the investing side, the business side, the more financial side, to try to bring that together in a more holistic way so that people have kind of a one-stop shop that they can wow. go to that helps them navigate the entire Pokemon world. And Catch Mall nice. says he loves traveling. Makes, makes sense. sense. Honestly, dude, that, that's actually that's, that's pretty cool. Honestly, I thought you were trolling. I, I thought you were trying to get us with the like the the philosophical um strand again. But okay, so which pack? Since you ha gave us, yeah, you gave last us the last time. Ooh, let's go. Let's get one of those uh, rapid strike Urshifus. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, my right, turn to open up a pack. Go for it. We're gonna run a pack. That's here. We're crazy, gonna have to... though. That's like funny. Yeah, we're gonna have to start giving you uh questions, dude. Like like answers. Because... <laughs> At least two. Yeah, hey, at least we're, we're finally winning something, guys. We're, we're finally winning one, okay? Yeah. Let's not lose now. Like, watch, now he's going to open up his next pack, and it's just going to be the Golden session, and we're going to instantly lose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, a Water Energy. We got the Energy Recycler, Urn of Vitality, Donphan, Honedge, Horsey, Mankey, Slowpoke, Fomantis. Ooh, Reverse Hollow Artillery, and... A holo tapu gulu. Oh, holo wow. tapu gulu. We needed this one. Yes, we did. There we go. There we go. We needed that for our binder. Heck yeah! So people are still laughing about the bagpipes answer. <laughs> 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 That's so funny. Uh, All right. Okay. So... Getting into question six. Getting into the latter half of the of the questions. Okay, so if you were to pick any content creator on YouTube, even outside of Pokemon, who would you mm -hmm. want to collab with? Yeah, so this one, this one I've been thinking about for a while now of who it would be, like if I could have my choice of anyone that would really give me the most insight, you know, the outside of just Pokemon or even in Pokemon, the person that I think could give me the most insight when it comes to YouTube. Um, so the first one, is one of the the biggest the og very controversial you love him you hate him but logan paul whatever you have to say about him the guy's been around for a long time he's yeah. found his his uh, means of success and uh, i think that regardless of what you think of him uh, i think there's a lot of beneficial information yeah. and a lot of he knows how to things money, that you dude. can learn he knows how to make exactly. money. that man knows his way around exactly so logan paul would be choice number one. Choice number two would be the man, the myth, the legend, Leonhardt himself. Ooh. Talk about a guy that knows how to navigate the realm of Pokemon. He's really been doing it from the beginning. And the guy has had so many ups and downs. I, I really respect him a lot. Uh, 
because he he started small. He has been grinding ever since. And even to this day, with almost one and a half million subscribers, he continues to stay on the grind and continues to put out content on a really consistent basis. Yeah, we, we so, got to meet him in person. Uh, yeah, and he, he's a very nice guy, dude. Honestly, he's a very, very nice dude. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I, I've never I've never met him personally, but that's why he would be the one that I would want to most collaborate with. And then the last one would be Graham Stephan. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Graham Stephan. He has a channel that is mainly dedicated to uh, finance um, and financial topics. Uh, again, a self-made type of guy. Started out as a real estate agent and then started getting into YouTube and sharing his his insight into the real estate markets and then started to branch out into other investing areas. And I and he is also into Pokemon as well, right? So he actually recently did a collaboration with King Pokemon, wow. had a podcast with him, um, was a part of the Logan Paul, the first Logan Paul box break. So he is wow. also very much into Pokemon, but it is not what he is well known for. So you guys will have to decide which one would be of more oh interest this, to me. This is, is it one more Pokemon ones. heavy, less Pokemon heavy, yeah. or am I more concerned about just from a YouTube perspective of the person that would be able to provide me with the most insight. It's either two or three. No, I don't know. Because Logan Paul, even if it's like a quote unquote trolley option, Logan Paul has made it on Vine. Like he, that's how he started off. He started off on Vine, became millionaires through Vine. Vine got shut down, rebuilt himself into YouTube, became a millionaire through YouTube. Then he had the issues, the drama, whatever, moved from YouTube into TV, worked in a couple of movies, worked in a couple of TV shows, moved away from that back into YouTube, and now he's doing the boxing thing. That So if there's anything from Logan Paul to, to like keep from him as a person, is that he's a go-getter and that he knows how to make businesses out of anything and how to take up opportunities, which I think that Pokenav is very much with that sentiment as well, at least from, from talking to you as the vibes that I... Well, that I get from you. TCG, Funhouse, Fishing, Jubs, Everybody saying Victor, three. Catch Em All. They all say three. So yeah. we have to go with what they say. All right, so Grant. Three. Graham Stephan. Guys are going with Graham Stephan. Interesting. But you are correct. Wow. It is Graham Stephan. Oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> you guys are on a roll today. <laughs> what have I saying that you want to call out with Bad Baby? <laughs> Bad baby. Bad baby. I, yeah. Sorry, I, I'm I'm catch a little old school. I, I'm not sure. She Fill me like, in on me who outside. bad. Catch me outside. Oh, girl. okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. Bro, that, gotcha. That girl made so much money doing things that. Uh, anyway, moving forward. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which one of these three would you like for us to open? Ooh, let's see. Let I want to save. Well, I, I guess I shouldn't say save because. Well, you guys have been steamrolling me, honestly, and the chat has. So I'm assuming that you're going to get more right. Um, let's go. We, we went with the, I think, the Rapid Strike Urshifu last time. Let's go with the Single Strike. Okay, here you go. So far, we've opened up, what, five packs? And we've gotten every single one of them has been a, a white code card. Don't jinx it, yeah. Juan. Wow. Guys, uh, four <laughs> packs. Every single one of them has been a white yeah, code card. We're getting the fifth it, one man. right now. Don't jinx and it, bro. As expected. No, one. I didn't even look at it, man. <laughs> I didn't even look at it. You're so mean, bro. You, you're making me want to look at the code card, bro. You, you didn't even do the, the trick, okay? You already went through it. Oh, did you? No, you or didn't. see Oh, non-hollow. Non-hollow. Yeah. It was a green code card, guys. Green code card. It, oh. it was about time. It, it was overdue. It was overdue. Yeah, you just Yeah, it, there's me. no way your luck would have been like picking seven random packs oh, and getting wait, seven. Seven okay. white codes. It, it's just not feasible. There's no way you have that crazy luck. If you had that luck, we'd play in the lottery. This is a right pretty card, this. though, the reverse hollow horsey. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty. Okay. All right. Question number seven. We're kind of like steamrolling now through the questions getting on to the nitty-gritty of it um <laughs> what do you do for a living besides pokemon if you currently just live off of pokemon then what were you doing previously 
Um, Though I would like to say that I am entirely in uh, Pokemon. Pokemon is a uh, a good business venture of mine, but it isn't the sole venture. So beyond Pokemon, my nine to five, my day to day, um, the first one here is I am a financial advisor. So I actually got my degree in finance uh, from the University of Nebraska and have been a practicing financial advisor ever since. And to this day, I'm still a financial advisor. The next one here is, as you guys know, very into fitness, very into well-being. And uh, so I am actually a personal trainer, work with a large book of clients uh, as a personal trainer. And uh, something that I love waking up to every day is just knowing that I'm helping people to uh, get healthier, and to stay fit, especially in times like this, where it's been so tough during the pandemic and everything, uh, been on overload with business. So that is option number two. And then option number three is that I am a power trader. So similar to the financial markets, uh, power trader is one that deals in the energies markets. And what I do is I put together contracts uh, for the company that I currently work for of uh, being able to buy and sell energy contracts and negotiate deals for those contracts. So that would be option number three. TCG Funhouse is asking, uh, well, he wants us to ask you, what security licenses do you own? So securities licenses, when you first get into the industry, you get your series seven, which is your general broker's license. And then from there, to become a financial advisor, you garner your Series 66. So I have both of those licenses. So it's either one or three. I think it's one. No, I think it's one. Fishing says it's three. Yeah. Fishing, no, no. no. Uh, oh, Fishing says three. Catch them all yeah. said his point. My bad. I was reading Catch them all. Catch them all says to, to look at Funhouse. Uh, so people are saying one. Catch them all says one. But Fishing says three. You think it's one. I think it's one as well, yeah. I think Fauna is going to come back and say one if those facts are correct because he could have honestly just completely BS'd us and we wouldn't know any better. So, <laughs> um, uh, I, I do think it's one dope even before the, the licensing. That is the truth. Okay, so so one. I'm guessing people are going for one. Uh, it's tricky. I think the, the people really do know you, Pokemon. Yeah. What's the choices? Um, so, Thano, the choices are one that he is a financial advisor two he's a fitness trainer or three that he's a power trader but everybody's saying one everybody's saying one i think i was gonna have to be but i still think it's three because he moved on Ooh, ooh. i don't know it's a hard one i can see as all three honestly i i think that the fitness trainer is um or the personal trainer is uh the least um likely one i think you're more into the the business side of things i do think with the vibes you gave me you do have financial advisor vibes oh so funhouse is going for three now catch em all is going for three he switched as well thanos one so we have fishing no, is three uh what's choice one i think thanos was asking so i don't think he voted mm -hmm. so that's no, three job options says three. one yeah job says one so that's three options for three i think we're gonna lock in three then dude if we get this one right <laughs> I'm going to be so upset because it's like the least likely ones on all of them. And we're still getting them right. So let's lock it in. You're a power trader. Power trader. Wow. I have to say, guys, I, I didn't expect you to select that one. Uh, but it is correct. What? It is a power Sorry. trader. Oh, my God. <laughs> People know you. Oh, my God. It's because he's famous. Dude. Yeah, so, so interesting here. So, yeah, everybody in the chat – uh, Definitely has tabs on me. Um, so I actually had all three of these jobs at one point. So back when I was in college, uh, so I said I, I did graduate uh, with my degree in finance. But when I was in college, um, I played I played sports, I played football, I ran track. Um, but 
beyond that, I also, as a, a part-time job, I also did personal training. And I actually did that even after I graduated from college as well. I actually trained athletes who were wanting to move on to the collegiate level, especially in football. Um, so I did do um, personal training. Actually, while I was getting those licenses that I told you about, wow. the Series 7 and the Series 66, I was doing that while I was getting my licenses and, um, and garnering those. And then I became a financial advisor and I did that for, oh man, like four, four years or so and uh, decided to move out of that, started getting more into um, my own personal uh, business venture, starting to get more into real estate. And, uh, and then about a year ago, uh, got uh, reached out to by a, a local power company here in the Phoenix area, asking if I wanted to uh, join the team as a power trader. And so wow. I decided to go ahead and do that. So haven't been doing it for that long, but uh, but yeah, all three of those are actually correct. Wow. But my That's current position is a power trader. Crazy. Wow. What are the odds of that? And uh, you said you went to, to Nebraska, right? Yeah. You went yeah. to Nebraska. Uh, do you follow the football team still? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for uh, sure. You know Scott Frost? Yeah. Uh-huh. So he was our coach at UCF when we went undefeated on back to back Oh, yeah. Season. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, then he left definitely. us for you guys. So, yeah, a little, uh -huh. little bit sad scenes <laughs> a bit of, of a grudge on that one. So, but. yeah, shout out shout out to the guy in the chat that was uh, that was from Oklahoma. So I Nebraska is uh, is about on par with Oklahoma. And uh, I hate to say it, man, no, no you know, Hey, I'm sure you're a big Sooners fan and everything, but there's a reason why they call that area flyover country, that whole little strip right there. Oh, they call it the roast. Painful. No. So, oh. But I, I'm sure you are a great guy. Well, the one thing I will give to the, uh, the Plains, that whole strip right there, very nice people, like some of the most fantastic people that I've ever the met. Sooners. Just so kind. And uh, yeah. And then you go to Arizona and then you go to Florida and people are, are, are really mean because we're melting pot, right? It's yeah. just it's Florida's the same way as Arizona. It's just yeah. a big melting pot. Worst people, worst people ever. Florida, one hundred percent. Gotcha. Mo says uh, that's actually the guy from Oklahoma. He said he just went to your channel and subbed. I'm guessing he's gonna go unsub right back out right now because no. of that. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you, Kachamal. By the way, guys, if you guys haven't done so yet, please make sure to go check out Poganap. Uh, he's about to hit 10K, so let's let's put the effort that we can on the hashtag FuegoFam to, to try to help him get to, to 10K and achieve the goal, guys. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we have two packs left, that. and we have one to open right now, so we have one pack left for three questions. So you, have you guys to... better get them wrong. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> try to get them wrong. Uh, so, Poganap, which one do you want us to open? Ooh, let's go with uh, let's go with rapid strike. We'll save single strike for maybe last. I don't know. Oh, he said sing. Uh, he said single strike last time, and you opened up the Tyranitar, I think. You, that's the one that you gave me, and Is I it? was a little confused. Oh, about I thought it. you grabbed. Oh, no, my I didn't grab it. We, we didn't follow. We didn't follow Pokemon's <laughs> instructions. It's because I felt that it was gonna be a bad one, so I was like, you know what? Uh -huh. Let, let's move on. That's what you get. Yeah, that's what I get. One, two, three, <laughs> four. And that's uh, what you get. Fire energy. Weeping Bell, indeedy, yes, you know indeedy, don't be greedy. My professor has been annotating on my assignment for the last 10 minutes. Really? And I'm so You're anxious. You're getting notifications, yeah, on... On, on my phone. Roly oh. Coley, <laughs> I think we need a Roly Coley. And... It was a green code oh. card. Oh, That's nothing. what you get. No. That's what you get when you let your heart win. Paramore, anybody? Anybody? No, no Paramore friends in the house? Okay. Uh, I, rem I remember Paramore. Big back in what about like 2003, 2004? Yeah. <laughs> well, Paramore was there. at my yeah. grad night. Really? Yeah, th that was a performance, uh, 2010. Wow. She performed 2010. Yeah, that was before like they went on like their big hiatus where like they didn't know they were going to like split the band off yeah, and all that true. stuff. Yeah, true. Okay, so question eight. If you could have any Pokemon as your companion, who would you take? Ooh, this is a good one. This is a really good one. Some good answers in here too. So number one, right off the bat, it would have to be Charizard. Charizard, the gold standard, not just for the TCG, but I think for the Pokemon brand in general, always been the the Pokemon that I think most of us were searching for that was highly sought after. And if Charizard was my companion, I could just, you know, I could fly 
wherever I needed to go, just like Ash riding on his back wherever I needed to go. So Charizard would be choice number one. Choice number two would be Mewtwo. Mewtwo, at least at one point, was the strongest Pokemon ever of yeah. all time. So to really have him by your side, you really, really can't go wrong, right? No, but nobody would be able to touch you, especially in battle. Nobody would be able to touch you. So Mewtwo would be the second choice. And then the third would be Magikarp. And Magikarp, because he has such a great underdog story, right? So he starts out as a fish that can't really do a whole lot. You know, he can't, can't even, like, like the old Japanese legend, like the, the, the fish trying to make it up the waterfall, very yeah. similar to the Magikarp. And then he goes to become this ferocious beast of the sea in Gyarados. So I have a, a, a real personal and sentimental attachment to Magikarp because of his backstory. So that would be number That's three. That's cute. So it's either one or three. I don't know. I, I think Mewtwo. You think Mewtwo? I'm thinking Mewtwo, yeah. I think, but I think Charizard Mewtwo. would make sense because he likes to travel. And why not, like, have him fly Mewtwo to can him? teleport. Mewtwo can teleport? Yeah. And Mewtwo, Mewtwo can even become like they can train other Pokemon. Actually, I was just thinking about that when you said Mewtwo. I think I would, I would choose Mew, just because Mew um, is okay. So Arceus created Pokemon, but then Mew created all the different types of Pokemon. Like he like branched mm -hmm. himself out, so you can essentially have a Mew, mm -hmm. and then have Mew just make more Pokemon for you. Interesting. So you can essentially have like an unlimited supply of Pokemon just by having a Mew. But that's another mm -hmm. story for another day. Uh, fun to say Mewtwo total poker broker move <laughs> or power broker move. Right? <laughs> uh, I love the Magic Carp reasoning. Yeah, it's crazy. And like Magic Carp evolves by jumping over the mountain, right? Something like that. Like it jumps over the mountain, and that's like once like mm -hmm. it's accomplished that it can evolve into Gyarados or something. That I remember seeing that something like that in the anime. Uh, I just fell in love with Magic Carp. Says catch them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Barbara's in the chat. What's good, Barbara? I haven't seen you in a minute, dude. Brad uh, says all three. All three of them says Brad. Okay. Fishing is saying he loves Magikarp too. I but, would choose Lillipup. But most people are going for Mewtwo. Lillipup, you already have a dog. Why would you choose another dog? Well, you can because just buy if I'm one. in the anime, I don't have a dog. <laughs> you can just buy another dog. No. But you're not in the anime. They're breaking a Pokemon out of the anime into the real world. That's fine. Why would you get another dog? I'll get her. I'll give that's, her a companion. That's a waste it's my of a, companion that's and her a companion. A waste of a wish. <laughs> if we ever, if we ever find a genie in a bottle, I'm not letting you wish for anything. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, the the, the 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 Pokemon that you <laughs> definitely don't want to have are dog Pokemon yeah. and inanimate. Excuse me, inanimate object type yeah. Pokemon. Why would you want to clink? Why would you want to uh, yeah, clef? A Pokegeist or something like that, like a little teacup. <laughs> Actually, sometimes. Sometimes I, I think I could probably do really well with a clef key if like if I because I forget my keys all the time, right? <laughs> so if I have a clef key, I could just always have it on me. They just always be there. That's always funny. let me into my house, my truck, everything. I don't know. Man. Oh, Jeff I, says that Mewtwo can also talk. Yeah, yeah, Mewtwo can talk. Yeah, you can communicate with it. Or a talking meowth. If you want a cat, might as well get a talking meowth. No, I don't like cats. Yeah. I hate but, cats. But other than that, like, yeah, like getting a bird Pokemon, I feel like it's kind of a waste. Getting a rat Pokemon is kind of a waste. A dog. No. Mm -hmm. Like the only dog Pokemon that I feel like wouldn't be a waste Puka. is like Arcanine. Do you want a lily pup? Yeah. Look, yeah, Arcanine. Or Entei. I think, well, the, the three legendary yeah. dogs yeah, are, three uh, you know, dogs. Entei, yeah. Suicune, and uh, Raikou. Yeah, That'd I think be pretty th cool. those would be good. Those would be good. Catchamal says, but dogs are loyal. Yes. Maybe, maybe um, Sajin and Zamazenta out of the new ones. They, those could be good options too. But you already mm -hmm. picked the worst dog out of the dog pokemon no it's okay lily pup victor t <laughs> says hey some of us have pet rocks oh pet rocks yeah you can get a roly coli look at that you can get a roly coli or a geodude maybe okay so i think that um we're most... gonna go for two yeah yeah option two, two which was I think mewtwo it's one so we're gonna lock in mewtwo and hopefully we got it wrong mewtwo yeah interesting <laughs> interesting you guys are correct once again. No, fucking <laughs> oh my gosh. You, you so guys are correct. So, <laughs> we go. Yeah, I so told everybody that's in the chat will probably know, like, Mewtwo is my favorite Pokemon of all time. Um, I've said it before. Just No, I was talking about the back. So, again, I kind of bring in these different things that there, there's, there's like shades of gray in here, right? So <laughs> I do like the backstory of Magikarp, but I... Uh, much more appreciate the backstory for Mewtwo. 
and the fact you know he came into the world not really knowing who he was why he was here and he really developed his own purpose for being and then the quote at the end of pokemon the first movie is just epic so well, yeah, yeah that, that, that's two. what oh oh, an, oh another one. we have like four Renatar of those too. what are yeah. those packs <laughs> what are those packs but yeah, I, I do agree with you, man. And I think that that movie is just like so nostalgic in general as well. Like it's, it's one Oh, of yeah, it's a like, classic. It's a yeah, classic. Like, like you, you start off like hating him. And then at the end, like you feel ba- like even as an adult, like when you watch the movie as an adult, you're like, dude, like he's having an identity crisis. Like I feel for him. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the one that's even more uh, sentimental than that is, um, Oh, what was it called? Mewtwo Returns. It wasn't like a. It wasn't like a. It wasn't a movie that they put into theaters. It was just kind of one of those that they released on DVD or VHS back then. Yeah. Um, but if you've never seen that one, uh, that that one's really good. It's Actually, called Mewtwo yeah. Returns. I'm yeah. have to, I'm it's have it's, to it's the that. one where it has Brock's famous line in there where he says, "I'll use my trusty frying pan as a drying pan." I'm sure you've probably seen that yeah. meme before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's from that movie. <laughs> yeah, I need to watch it. I actually have not have not seen it. I need Is to... it on Netflix now, you think? Maybe Netflix has a lot of Pokemon stuff yeah, now they and do a lot, have of, the a lot movies. of Pokemon movies. So, I don't think so. I don't I don't think so? that they do. That that might uh, be one that you're either getting off of uh Amazon Prime or 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 maybe just doing a deep dive into YouTube. I'm yeah, sure it's YouTube, out there somewhere. Yeah, I'll be on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. I definitely need to look into that. Fifteen like, minute cool. little pieces. <laughs> little pieces of the yeah, movies. Gotta watch <laughs> those clips. We're, we're going two. back to yeah. <laughs> We're going back to 2016 all over again, man. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so number nine, what is the Pokemon card you want the most? Oh, yeah, this is this is a really good one. Really good one. So <laughs> what I want to tell you guys right off the bat is you're you're going to have to decide what is it that I want more. Now, a lot of people out there that, you know, knowing that I was a financial advisor, you know, a, a power trader, a lot of people are going to, say maybe maybe he's more prone to the high value cards and that could very well be the case <laughs> um and then the other end of it is maybe ones that are more nostalgic maybe it's more of the nostalgic thing that i'm after so just keep that in mind so jumping into it the first one here is the first edition base set charizard i mean who who wouldn't want to have a first edition base set Charizard as part of their collection, right? The holy grail of Pokemon, the card that has kicked it off for so many people. I, I mean, it's ultimately the biggest chase card out there, right? So to have that as, I mean, you're you're literally holding the essence of Pokemon in your hand when you have that card. So the first one there would be first edition base set Charizard. Second one would be the prototype Blastoise. This is the first English Pokemon card that was ever released. And this, I believe these are only the only graded cards for these prototype Blastoises um, are graded by CGC. There, I don't believe there's any PSAs wow. out there. Chat can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, but these were the first English cards. And this was essentially what Wizards of the Coast was using to determine how the style and the aesthetic of their cards were going to look. And they went through various, um, uh, they had various, uh, uh, what's the word? They had Crazy. variations to them. There was like three different variations to the uh, Blastoise prototype. So that would be choice number two. Um, and then the last one here, um, the Pikachu Illustrator. I mean, if you've got the Pikachu Illustrator yeah. in your hands, you are sitting on an absolute gold mine. Um, and again, Pikachu this is, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's just one of those things that you guys have to think what, what, what means more to me from what you know about me in this conversation, from what everyone knows about me in the chat, uh, which one of those would hold more of a value to me that I would want to have. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, fun to say the gold star Mewtwo, and that's not even an option. I was thinking so, of that one too. One Charizard, uh, two Blastoise, yeah, so three base set, Pikachu. first edition Charizard, uh, prototype Blastoise, or Pikachu Illustrator, guys. I think it's either. I, no. I, I, I don't it's think it's the base set. I think the base set is too basic. Uh, no, <laughs> no pun intended. I think the base set Charizard <laughs> is too basic. I think it's either the prototype Blastoise, yeah, or the Pikachu Illustrator. Fauna is going for Prototype Blastoise. I think it's Prototype Blastoise too. Um, yeah, I feel like yeah, base set is just everybody. Everybody Catch wants them all that says one. Base like, set though, 
And Victor says two. <laughs> Victor says two because Magic the Gathering is pretty cool. I'm pretty sure he says that <laughs> because it was actually printed uh, into Magic the Gathering as well or something like oh, that. Oh, really? Like there's like a blast in the, in the background. Oh, I think, I think Gathering. you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, I think the, the backs on it is actually a Magic uh, yeah. a back, not Pokemon. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Jeb says one. So we have two for one, one for two. No, yeah. two for two. Yeah, we have two for uh, two for two, and then one for one. Victor says he's disappointed. There's no Venusaur in those options, though. Ooh, because you could have gotten the trio, dude. You had the Charizard, you had the Blastoise, but no Venusaur. Venusaur gets no love. <laughs> the, the Pikachu, I, know, I, mean, I, I will start. say this. I will say this that in Red and Blue, my choice of starter Pokemon was almost always Bulbasaur. Really? Aww. Almost Bulbasaur. Like, I people don't give Bulbasaur enough credit because, especially when you got to the Elite Four, once you got that Venusaur powered up, like yeah. he just destroyed things. Like Razor Leaf, Solar Beam, you could just destroy. Especially yeah. when you got to Lance and you got to the Dragon type Pokemon, that was your best choice by far. Dude, so so I actually never liked Venusaur. I, I was very much one of those people. It's like you know, like it's at least cool one out of the three. And then last year I started getting into VGC, and by far Venusaur is the best one out of the three. Like, because mm -hmm. Venusaur has an, a hidden ability, uh, Chlorophyll. Now, I don't know how familiar you are with the TCG, but in, with Chlorophyll, essentially, if you said the Sunlight, which like a lot of Pokemon like Torco or Ninetales and stuff mm -hmm. can do with their ability, his speed is doubled, and he gets access to Sleep Powder. So he becomes the fastest Pokemon in the game, and he wow. can put Pokemon to sleep. So he just put everything to sleep turn one and you win from there on so, so he's he, definitely the, one of the wow. best so i see that jeb says that the backstories for two and three seem like a fake out Ooh. last story or thanos says two so we have two votes for one and three votes for two so three votes for two okay all right let's two. vote for two two all right so two is uh prototype last um, blastoise, blastoise. blastoise that is correct prototype no. blastoise all right open up the tv win <laughs> no, we can't open it. Open up the ATB. No. We have we no can't. more buttons. He can open it. The poor guy hasn't opened anything. Go. <laughs> so here, here's what I'm going to do. So we've been going for a while now. Yeah. And I've been sipping on water. I got to hit the bathroom before we move on. So I'm going to let you guys decide. If you guys want, I am more than happy to open up some packs yeah. on my end okay. uh, as part of it. But I really got to go pee. All right. Before. You're good. You're good. Yeah, you're good. Go ahead. <laughs> so I'll be right back. All right. Okay. All right. Let's let the chat decide then. No, we can't open up the ETB one. Chat. I told Natasha to get more packs, guys. They're expensive, I man. To, I told Natasha get one more pack just in case. They are expensive. I literally okay. So yeah, let him say, open let a let him pack. Open I pack. agree. He hasn't opened anything. Hmm. I told him that. He told her. I was like, hey guys. He's gonna uh, get so mad at me now. I was like, hey, like you know, let's just get eight. Then I have to have another case. talk with fishing and. Ch and I, I literally told her, I was like, hey, <laughs> get eight packs just in case something like this happened because it can happen. She was like, it won't happen. It's it won't okay. happen. It, what were the odds that they did, were going to happen? Did it not just happen? It wasn't supposed to. Literally, you, you guys started to pick options that weren't even realistic and you guys still got them. I think the only one that we missed was the backpipes one because it was just too unrealistic. It was too trolly. Let him open a pack. You see, Thanos says it again. And then Fishing says, I get to keep the sleeves. Why? I don't know. I'm shooting for a hundred percent here with the with these questions. I mean, I, I mean, we are stalker. We're very similar All people. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, we're guys. Gonna, so what? We're what gonna let you the, open up a pack. You know, we're we're, we're gonna we're okay. Gonna pity you, cool. we're Good. Gonna like, you know what? My my hands have my hands have been uh, really relaxed here tonight. I need to jump <laughs> into some packs, anyways. So let's let's go ahead and crack open uh, a couple packs here, if you guys are cool with that. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's just. Let's go open a few. Open up as right. many as you Here want. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, they are they are Dollar Tree packs. Yeah. Oh, actually, I caught a I caught a glimpse in this ooh, one, guys. So ooh, ooh. this might. Uh, here we go. Oh man. Uh, Probopus. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, Snorlax. Right there. Snorlax, Snorlax v. v. There we go. Wow. Very cool. That's something. Yeah, and then noon. a Galarian Linoon, which is That's just an so... uncommon. We got so, this Norlax. All right, that's let's, pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The, right. Honestly, man, like I never really expect anything out of the Dollar Tree packs, but uh, every now and then, you never know. Oh, geez, I caught a glimpse of something oh, else in this oh. one, too. All right, here we oh, go. Oh, he's really happy about it. Oh. 
Oh, oh Cramorant V. Cramorant V. Wow. Not too bad that's for a, the dog. Hey, that's, yeah, pretty that's pretty impressive, cool. honestly. And an oh, energy. and then uh, energy. You, you love to get an All right. energy. Right, let's, uh, let's do one more here. Yeah. Let's crack into another one. All right. I'm not going to look. With only three cards in the pack, it's like it's really easy to like to get the, yeah. to catch a sneak peek. All right, good. Krabby. Oh, Zigzagoon. Zigzagoon. And, and a energy, was it energy shirt. It's yep. okay. You got two Vs, though. Two Vs. Thank God. That's, we didn't yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, okay. So, let's see. You guys didn't predict uh, we would do good. Yeah, we didn't think you guys would do good. I honestly didn't think. Victor's asking, so well. do you think po uh, uh, I wonder if Pokenaf plays League. Do you play League of Legends? I don't. I don't. I'll be honest with you guys. Like, I I am so busy, like, 99% of the time. Like, I just, I just don't have time for, like, all of the other games and things like that. Like, I'm just always so wrapped up with everything. I mean, it's, it's even, I'm sure you, as you guys know, it's sometimes even difficult to try to put content together yeah, yeah, um, just with you know, work schedules and everything like that. So I just try to, to have the best time management that I can and just allocate my time towards the things that are important. But, you know, when things, if things do free up a little bit, I would like to try to get into uh, some more games. I'd like to actually try to learn the you know the, the tcg game? a little bit more yeah the, the yeah. tcgo like online the the app or whatever it does a really good job of like teaching you how to how to like work the game out mm -hmm. uh, it makes you do like uh, three or four games as a tutorial so it's, it's a really really good like teacher for for the game um but if you do ever get into league of legends we do need a new support player uh, you're gonna cause, say no no because i'm a jungler so i need to roast victor so victor's our support player so if you ever want to hop on League of Legends, <laughs> let us know because we need a we need a new supporter. But anyway, uh, final Our question. Last question. Final question of a the stream. What is the most expensive pack you've ever opened? You guys save the best for last. The best for last here. Okay, again, just keep in mind. Keep in mind, I'm a I'm a big I'm a big baller when it comes to I've been doing this for a long time too. So I was doing this before things really got outrageous, right? Yeah. So back in 2016, a lot, a lot different uh, scene back then. So first choice here, first edition base set booster pack. Second one, EX Deoxys. And the third, Aquapolis. I have so, no idea what the final two packs are, so, so I can't give an opinion. So base set, and then you said um, Deoxys, and then Aquapolis. Yep, EX, and then yeah. Aquapolis. Yeah, so... Mm, what do you think? <sighs> I think it's one of the last two. EX, Deoxys. Oh, dude. Aquapolis was a really good set, too. I'm, I'm, I'm getting Aquapolis vibes, honestly. I'm getting Aquapolis, guys. Uh, guys, okay, so base set, uh, EX Deoxys, or Aquapolis, guys. Hmm. Fauna says, nah, he is, I can tell he's an eccentric person, and a lot of his answers reflect that. Consistent, he uh, he is, says That's Yoda. <laughs> Fauna <laughs> says that you and him are very, very similar people. Man, that was bad English <laughs> in my end. <laughs> You're a good funhouse. Uh, Brad is asking us how to fix the lag in League of Legends. Brad, it might be your internet. I can't believe we got Brad to play League of Legends. That is such a toxic community. And he's like a 12-year-old. He's going to get weeded out by the toxic city of that game. Well, uh, TCG says uh, one. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty affordable back then. Yeah, he's saying that in 2016 base, it was pretty affordable. Fishing and Jeb say three. Danu says three. Daniel, Daniel says, three. says three. Hey, Daniel's here. So, I, I'm guessing a lot most of people are saying four. Are saying three. Threes. All right. We're going to lock three. in three. Aquapolis. Aquapolis, so the 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 e-reader era, the era that really ended it all for Wizards of the Coast, right? Yeah. These were the last couple sets that Wizards of the Coast released before they split ways with Pokemon. And Aquapolis is correct. Oh my we god, got a 90%. <laughs> we got a ninety percent. We got a ninety percent. That that's nuts. So that we had never. Moved yeah, the yeah I just moved the camera. We had never gotten more than I want to say six. 
Yeah. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah. Wow. Juan is wow. going to get so mad at me. Bro, I literally, this is the one time that we didn't have like exactly 10 packs ready to go. So I was like, you know, like, she's like, it's okay. Like, it's never happened before. We can get seven, eight packs. We'll be fine. And we were not fine. And things were not aye, good. Aye. So, but you Dude, get to crazy. open the packs. Yeah, you get to open up. If you want to open up another three packs. Um, All right, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm happy with that. All right, so let's see. The community see. really I'm, does I'm know you, Pokenav. Yeah, they do. That's that's actually really surprising, yeah. honestly, because I'm I'm not really that interesting. <laughs> I mean, it's, been a, it's been a fun podcast, man. I think the people have enjoyed it. Yamper. Yamper. And a Galvantula. Galvantula. Yeah, Galvantula. It is uh, not just an uncommon. So let's see. Jump into another one. Catch them all says that Pokenava has great fans. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, dude. They really are. They really are the old the old Nav Nation. They're Nav they're Nation. a great group of people. Reverse Ooh, Berserker, Berserker, yeah. Follow, yeah. And a bike. Was that Rotom? Yeah, Rotom bike. Yep, Rotom bike. All right, let me see. How many more do I got over here? I got, I got two more. We'll okay. go ahead and just jump into these last two. Yeah. I got so many of these sitting in storage that. I need to get through some of them. Ball toy. Ball toy. Reverse. Hold reverse. The, goss. the goss. And. Oop. Is that a stunfisk? Yeah, stunfisk. Stunfisk. Ah. All right. <laughs> well, last last pack magic. Here. Last pack magic. All right. Let's, let's give you a session. Let's give you a session. Ooh, I'll freak out if it is. <laughs> Gasly. Gasly. Oh, Ponyard. And oh. Oh, oh. Squire. Or a Squire. Dang. So guys well, you got a Snorlax and you yeah. got the Cramorant. Yeah, he got yeah, the Yeah, yeah, that's that's good pool. That's pretty impressive. So yeah, yeah let me uh Here's for anybody that might be too. joining in. Show we got good yeah, pools. Show, go ahead show we got pools. crazy pools, yeah. We I think we might have just gotten our first win, guys. Yeah, our first yeah. win. <laughs> yeah, a very dominant, very dominant win. <laughs> Yeah, guys, we, we did it. You guys did it. Congrats to, to the chat for getting a 90% on on getting to know Pokenav. I guess you guys already knew him. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, man, thank you so much for, for coming in, dude. We really yeah, do uh, super appreciate nice, having man. you here. It was a really, really good um, stream. Being honest, I was a little bit nervous coming into this because you're the first guest that we've had that we actually haven't spoken to before, mm -hmm. like actually like, like talked to. So I was a little bit like, oh my gosh, like, like we don't know him and he doesn't know us. It's going to be like, oh, like these people are so weird. Never hanging out <laughs> with them again. Uh, so I, I really do enjoy it, man. Like I, I felt like, like I've known you for forever. So it's, it's been a, it's been a good talk. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully the chat enjoyed it as well. Uh, again, guys, can't reiterate enough. Uh, please make sure to go subscribe to Pokenav. Go check them out. Um, Real Pokenav on Instagram. Uh, Pokenavnation.com for the website. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So they can find me again, uh, Real Pokenav over on Instagram, obviously Pokenav on YouTube, uh, pokenavnation.com. Uh, you can check out the website there. Um, and then also, I forgot to mention, I also have my own podcast uh, called the Pokemon Masterclass. And we've had some fantastic discussions on there uh, with people like King Pokemon. And we've had Gem Mint right? Pokemon, yeah. Pat Flynn. Um, just a, a lot of fantastic people. Just recently had uh, Randolph Pokemon yeah, Randolph on the Pokemon. podcast as well. Yeah. That was um, so cool. a lot of cool we things. We love Randolph. Yeah. So yeah. We I'm a big fan like, of the yeah. segment in general. So yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's pretty yeah. cool. And also, I'm, I think I saw on your channel when I was checking you out earlier too that uh, you're doing a live stream tomorrow. You also have a get to know, but it's get to know the market uh, mm -hmm. podcast tomorrow, right? So, yeah, yeah. So it's something that is a part of the Pokemon Masterclass. We do it once a month and uh, we call it the, the round table discussions, the Pokemon yeah. round table. And it's where uh, myself, uh, James Carson, a.k.a. Uh, ZNG Emporium, uh, Jake from Pokenomics and Pokemon Radar. Most yeah. recently, we all get together and we just we bring something to the table, some kind of topic or something that we can all discuss. And then we all give our takes on it so that the audience gets a little more holistic picture on that particular topic, that subject. And, uh, and then tomorrow, we actually just found out today, we are going to have a special guest on Ooh. this month's 
podcast or on this round table. Guys, so uh, you guys could be looking out for that. So yeah, that's, that's five, that. that's five, uh, pokey tubers that will all be Ooh. conjoined. So it should be a lot of fun. Guys, yeah. you guys can't miss that tomorrow then. So if you guys haven't done so yet, yeah, again, subscribe to Pokenaf. If you guys haven't done so either, please make sure to hit a like on the stream. It really does help out the channel quite a bit. Before we go, we do have one last request of you, mm. Pokenaf. Uh, we need you to nominate somebody to come here in a couple of weeks. Ooh, that is a good, good question. Um, let's see. What 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 kind of what kind of conversation or what kind of person would you guys like to have? You always want somebody that's kind of like me, more finance related. You guys want more of a general Poketuber, um, uh, pack opening. Anything, what kind of person? Any, anything, anything that that you think uh, would be a, a good see. fit for the podcast that would be interesting to get to know. Maybe somebody that people don't know too much about. Get to know them better. Let, tell me this. Who have you guys had on so, the podcast thus we've far? We've had Yeezy. We've had Rob, Polish Rob. We've mm -hmm. had Claire Slayer. And we've had Collecting with Jewels. And now you. So those are the, the five okay. guests that we've had so far. Okay. Um, I would say I, I was actually going to request Rob. I, I really love Rob. He's got, yeah, he's he's got awesome a great dude. personality. He lives actually he's, right around the corner from us. He literally lives like 20 minutes. Oh, no us. kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, Rob, what's so funny, when I first started my channel, uh, Rob was one of the, the first people that reached out to me. I actually have, if you go way back into my, my videos and my catalog, I did a pack battle with Rob uh, yeah. early on. And same thing with Jules as well. Um, so let's see. So last year around Thanksgiving, we did something called the Poke Bowl 2020, which was like, it was like a three on three pack battle. And it was myself, Jules and uh, another one of our friends, Jordan, uh, he's got a channel called Pokey Fuel. Um, he's not really doing it anymore. He's kind of gone on to other things, but we battled against Rob, Yizzy, and uh, Shinja. She goes by Shinjinator on uh, YouTube. Um, so I would say since you've already covered uh, Rob and Yizzy and Jules, it would be cool to see you kind of complete or, or attempt to complete that Pokeball uh, group. Okay. So I would I would nominate uh, Shinjinator to come on the, the podcast next. Okay. okay. She's, she's really cool. cool. She's, she's really cool. She does a lot more. It seems like nowadays a lot more on Instagram uh, than YouTube, but she does put out content on uh, YouTube as well. Um, so I, I think I'll go ahead and, and nominate her. Okay. From the, we'll, we'll she's she's from the, the, the three chunk of tears. That was their team name was the three chunk of tears, the three <laughs> Pikachu chunk of tears. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, we'll hit her up. We'll, awesome. we'll see if she's interested in coming over to the channel and doing um i get to know for sure yeah uh we really do appreciate that man uh i think yeah that's gonna do it for us uh hopefully again you guys enjoyed and i think with that said pokeballers out peace